With the Definitive Edition release, there have been some changes in the rules on how to make your own custom badges and banners for the game. This video is a guide on how to get your previous badges and banners into Definitive Edition, and also how to create new ones. First up, let's talk about how to bring your old badges and banners across. The folder location where badges and banners were kept has been moved, so you'll have to locate the new folder under this pathway if you're using Windows. So simply go to your old badge and banner folder. If you can't remember the game folder, no worries. You can go to Steam, find your old game, right click, go to Manage, and then Browse Local Files. You'll see the game folder pop up and you should have a badge folder and a banner folder. Copy the contents of those into the corresponding folders in the new game. Here's the pathway again. And you should be right to go. Now, let's talk about the new rule set for badges and banners in Definitive Edition. While the old badges and banners had to stick to specific pixel sizes, it seems that limitations have been removed from the Definitive Edition with a slight caveat. If you're just playing Skirmish solo, you can pretty much make badges and banners whatever size you like. I've made banners from 1000 pixels wide up to 5000 pixels wide, and they all seem to work fine in the Army Painter. If, however, you're going to be taking your custom badges and banners to online multiplayer matches, you should know that the larger the size of the badge or banner, the more chance that during that initial launch, when badges and banners are transferred between players, the game might crash. As large size custom badges and banners are being flung across the internet. Access denied. Now I've done some testing from banners having a width of the standard legacy game, which is 64 pixels. Then I've tested widths 128, 250, 500, 1000 and 2000 pixels, all in multiplayer matches. My connection is pretty decent, so keep that in mind and if you've got a slightly patchier connection, this might not apply to you. The base rule is, when in doubt, stick to 64 pixels only. 64, okay cool. Here's the rough size of the TGA files of each of those pixel width banners that I tested. And here is my rough breakdown of my experiences playing with these different sized files in multiplayer matches. Obviously 64 pixel width is fairly safe, that's the legacy size, not much difference here. 128 pixel was also fine and I didn't experience any crashes. 250 pixel was mostly fine but I did have one game crash. 500 pixel widths, I did start to see more regular crashes when I was trying to get into some games. 1000 pixels, I only got one or two games working and the rest of them crashed. And at 2000 pixel width, pretty much that guaranteed a crash every time. I've also tested RLE compression and non-RGB colour modes, and they do not work at all, whether in single or multiplayer. So those rules are still the same as Legacy. So, I would suggest for multiplayer that you keep badges and banners to 128 or under for pixel width to minimise game crashing. If in doubt, just stick to 64 pixel width. There may be some variations with your connection speed, depending also on the host and depending on servers, so it's not guaranteed, but there you go. If you're going any bigger or wider than that, you may start to increase your risk of crashing games online. It may be prudent to make two copies of the same badge or banner in the Team Army section and make one army with the lower pixel badge or banner as MP for multiplayer and have the higher pixel army badges the same name with the suffix SP for single player. Just so you can flip between the two when you need, but that's just a suggestion. Alright, let's go through it all, let's make a new banner and guide you through the process. This is all done in GIMP software, which is free to download, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to follow along. Create a new project in GIMP. Go to File and then New. I'd advise sticking to the original ratio for badges and banners so that the proportions look best on screen. Again, if you're playing single player only, you'll be fine to make whatever size you like, so personally, I'm making a banner here and choosing the canvas size as 2000 pixels wide by 3000 pixels high. I won't be using this banner in multiplayer. If you're making a banner for multiplayer, I would stick to a canvas size no bigger than 128 pixels wide according to my testing so far. Now, as I said, I'm making a banner here, which means whatever my width is, I need to multiply by 1.5 to get the correct height. As I'm making a solo game banner here with a width of 2000 pixels, my height needs to be 3000 pixels. If you're making a badge, then the height and the width I'd recommend would be the same. 
So 128 wide, 128 high, or whatever the size is you're making. Okay, moving on. So I've got my canvas size and I have a project in mind to update my faction, the Ravenshield Sisters of Battle. I've done a Google search and found some images that I like, so let's move on. I'm going to start layering my image, so I go up to File and Open as Layers. I've got this cool looking raven on a shield that I'm going to alter a little bit for my purposes, so I'm going to choose that. Oh, it's also very important that you ensure the image has an alpha channel, meaning the background of your image is a negative space. So let's do that now. Mine already has an alpha channel, as you can see, because the option is greyed out. But if this is an option, you should click this. Alright, now this image isn't exactly taking up the whole canvas, so I'm going to fix that by resizing it. I hold shift and press S. Now I'm going to choose the link option because I want the proportions of the image to remain and I'm choosing width of 2000 pixels and resize to that. Hmm. Because I'm going to erase all this background behind the shield I want it even bigger so let's resize manually. Shift S again and now I'm going to drag the image to the size I want it. I'm happy with that but it's not centered so I press M on the keyboard for move and then left click to drag it where I think it looks best. Alright good, time for another layer I reckon. I'm going to overlay this image of our martyred lady on top of the raven, so to add this I've gone to file, open as layer and found this image. I don't really like the white box around it so I'm going to delete that surrounding white. The problem is it will also remove the white inside the skull which I think I want to keep. So I'm going to go up to the bucket tool or you can press shift B for bucket and pick a colour that isn't white and I'm going to fill the head, the areas that I don't want deleted. Now I'm going to be free to delete all the white parts in the layer. So I go up to select and by colour. Now click on the white outsides. You can click and drag left and right to adjust the exact hue that you want to pick. This will be close enough. Now that white has been selected I press delete on my keyboard and the image is already looking much better. Now let's fix that weird colour inside the skull. Back to the bucket tool and make it white again. I'm not happy with the size and the placement, so making sure I have the correct layer chosen, I press Shift S for resizing. And let's play with that a little bit. Yeah, that looks okay. Now I press M for move and let's put it right there. This is a bit tedious, I'll be honest. Those who have Photoshop will be able to do this in a heartbeat, but I essentially want to get rid of the Winter Forest background and I'm going to do it manually, so I choose the Raven Shield layer and I go to the Eraser. I can choose the size of the eraser and scroll in and out with control and scroll wheel and navigate around the image. Let's just fast forward all of this erasing. And done. Alright, we still have a white background layer from when we created the project, so I'm going to get rid of that right now by right clicking on it and choosing delete layer. Now we can see that alpha channel negative space back there. Nice. You want to see something cool? My Raven Shield colours are actually more red and black and currently my image is decidedly blue, so let's change that. Make sure you've got the correct layer selected on the right, go up to Colour and Hue Chroma. Now you can click and drag left and right on the hue bar and see all sorts of colours available in the image. You can also use the Chroma tab if you want more of a black and white feel, but I'm happy with this red right here. I think I need it slightly bigger, so let's resize it again. The problem is, I like where the martyred lady is in the center, so let's lock these layers together so they stick nicely together when I move one of them. So that if I resize one, the other one automatically resizes with it. Yep, much better. I'm going to go to save as in case I want to make changes in future. This saves as a GIMP file, which we are not going to send to the game directory. This is just in case it doesn't look good or we want to change some of the layers in the future. Okay, let's make the TGA file to send to the actual game. Go up to File and Export As. Find a place to save it and make sure to name the file as a .tga, otherwise this won't work. You'll be given the option for RLE compression. Make sure that the box is unticked and choose bottom left in the option menu here. Now we find the file and put it in the correct game folder. Once more, here's the location. And once you've done that, you are finished. Open the game and find the correct banner or badge that you created in the Army Painter and enjoy it. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know in the comments how you've got on. Location secured and sanctified.